Star Trek Paperbacks, part two, part two of uh, at least, uh, I don't know how many there's going to be of these because I have a lot of them. But as you can see, I have boxes of these Star Trek paperbacks that I've collected over the years. And uh, we have not, I have not looked into these boxes in over 10 years. I don't know what's in them. And so we're just going to go through them now. They are no particular order whatsoever. If you saw the first video, you would know that. And the second video will continue that. And the third, fourth, and fifth video will continue that too. And uh, these are paperbacks, but they're still remarkably heavy. 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 And here we go. Star Trek paperbacks. Some of the great stuff from the 70s, 80s, 90s, and 2000s. And the first one we're going to start off with is and these also these also comprise uh, books from the original Star Trek series, uh, I mean the show, and and all the other various spin-off shows and, and and things. So it's like a lot of stuff. So this is the original Star Trek show, uh, Battle Stations, this is number thirty-one by Diane Carey. Then you've got even things like this, like Which Way books, number twenty-four. So these are like uh, like those younger younger adult books where you figure out where the where you want to do the adventure. But it was a Star Trek book, so I bought it. And at one time I was going to uh, do a uh, bibliography of all the Star Trek paperbacks, but I don't think that's going to happen. And this is another cool one: Star Trek Deep Space Nine, the show. This is number three, Blood Letter by uh, K. W. Jeter famous good science fiction writer. This is this is one that I read. It was The Klingon Gambit by Robert Vardman. So this is the original edition from the Times, Timescape book in uh, 1981. And then this is a reprint. That's the fourth or fifth, fifth printing. But you can see there's some, there's some difference in the editions and there's some difference in the editions uh, the reprint editions okay so this is the time time timescape uh, book with their logo for pocket from pocket books but then pocket books got rid of the timescape logo the timescape books and then they just did it made regular pocket books and uh, also you'll notice that the, in the beginning they didn't have a number but here this is the third book in the series in that series so a lot of these books are numbered and this is uh, just uh, very confusing sometimes for, for lead readers and collectors, or at least for collectors. But for readers, it's fun because it's good stuff. Um, Star Trek The New Voyages 2. That was a good, that was a good, uh, that was good, good stories in that. And then this one here, Star Trek... Perry's Planet by uh, Jack C. Haldeman. That's uh, Joe Haldeman's brother. And that was a really good science fiction story, Star Trek story. Uh, Trouble with Tribbles. That's the first printing of that. And uh, this is a, just a, a signet book, Star Trek quiz book. With questions and answers and all kinds of stuff. Star Trek Voyager number 12, Chrysalis, with Captain Janeway. Here's what they have the number over here. I like all these books. They're interesting. Star Trek The Next Generation, Contamination. Star Trek Crucible Kirk. The Star to Every Wandering by David George III. So it's a book about Kirk. I don't know. It's, most of these I have not read, but the ones that I have read, I, I have liked and I've enjoyed them. The Galactic Whirlpool by David Gerald, who wrote The Trouble, Trouble with Shrivels. He also wrote The World of Star Trek. This is a reprint of uh, James... Uh, Oh, no, it's not James Bush. Huh? This is the, the reprint, though, of uh, this Theodore Cogswell, Spock Messiah. 
and the Vulcan Academy Murders by Jean Laura. This is number 20. I read this and I like this quite a bit. This is pretty good. I also read uh, World Without End by Joe, Joe Hol I, I also read World Without End by Joe Haldeman, brother of Jack Haldeman, you just saw another book by him. And this was good too, The Starless World by George Gordon Eklund. And Vulcan's Glory. This was uh, number 44 in the original Star Trek series. This is from 1989. Most of these are all, almost all of these are paperback originals. And this is written by D.C. Fontana, who was involved with the original Star Trek series. So again, most of these are um, paperback originals, first editions. Uh, this is, by, or, or these are reprints of the paperback original first editions. This is the second printing with new cover art. So that's, I'm going to put those on the side over here. And I've got some trade paperbacks, which I am increasingly less enamored of collecting because they're, they're so big and they're just kind of, uh, I don't know, but the Star Trek Voyager Endgame Star Trek Tales from the Captain's Table. This was uh, this was sent to me by Pocket Books. The Physics of Star Trek by Lawrence Krauss is an interesting book. Uh, Beyond Star Trek by Lawrence Krauss. Another one that was sent to me many years ago when it first came out. And uh, Effects Not Taken, uh, a parody, what if Stephen King, Anne Rice, Kurt Vonnegut, and other literary greats had written episodes of Star Trek The Next Generation. See now, if I like Star if I was a big fan of Star Trek The Next Generation, I would definitely read this. But uh, I'm not a big, big fan of that, of the other series. I like the original series uh, very, very strongly very much. The other series are okay, but, you know, they don't really uh, grab me. So if this was, uh, you know, a, a what if of the original Star Trek, I would, I would definitely give it a read. Now, to more. The Endless Supply of Star Trek books. Captain's Table, War Dragons, James Kirk and Hiraku Sulu by L.A. Graff. This is another series within the series. Now we're getting back to basics here. This is the 10th ten printing. This is Star Trek 10, by, edited by James Blish when he did his uh, novelizations. And in this is the alternative factor, the empath, Galileo 7. Is there truth no, is there in truth no beauty? A Private Little War, and The Omega Glory. And uh, I can't make out who did the cover art. Really nice. So this is Star Trek X, the original series, the original novelizations by James Bush. Star Trek VI. Six? I went with the six, huh? The Undiscovered Country. So this, I think, is the last Star Trek movie. This is a novelization of the movie by uh, J.M. Dillard. This is the, uh, I think this is the last Kirk uh, Star Trek, uh, William Shatner Star Trek. Um, Meaning in Star Trek by Karen Blair. Why was Star Trek the most popular series of all time? Thought, thorough, intelligent, and meaningful, says Leonard Nimoy at the bottom. And here's one of the greatest books you'll ever encounter, the Klingon Dictionary, which is probably pretty scarce. I don't think this is a scarce item. 1985, the official guide to Klingon words and phrases, which definitely, uh, if you're going to be a, if you're going to write Star Trek stuff, you have to have that book. You would need that, I would think. Uh, 
Preserver, a Star Trek novel by William Shatner. Now, William Shatner never wrote anything, and it's, this is William Shatner with Judith Reeves Stevens and Garfield Reeves Stevens. And uh, I would venture to guess this is a two, book from 2000. Uh, 2000. The, the paperback is 2001. I would venture to say that that the Stevens wrote this book and not William Shatner, but it's a book about, I guess it's Shatner and, uh, I mean, uh, Kirk and, uh, and, um, Picard. Picard. And the next one is Strangers from the Sky, the epic novel of first contact between man and Vulcan. It's a big fat book. There must have been a lot going on. I have not read that, but I, that's one that I would like to write, uh, I would like to read. Um, two more Captain's Table books. Uh, Christopher Pike, um, Where Sea Meets the Sky, young Christopher Pike, I guess. And Captain's Table, book three of six. So there's six books in this series. This is Deep Space Nine, The Mist, and that's... Um, uh, the fellow who played, I don't remember the actor's name, but that was the, uh, the main character in Deep Space Nine. Um, next one, Star Trek Trader Wins, the incredible third book in the best-selling Lost Years Saga. So this is Pocket Book, it's number 70 in the series by L.A. Graff, but it's the third book in the sub-series so this, that's again, they have a lot of sub-series in the Star Trek paperback universe, uh, a lot of paperback originals early on, and it's just, uh, it can get very confusing, but uh, it's interesting, it's interesting. Star Trek Renegade, followed by Gene DeWeese. Star Trek The Final Nexus, um, also by Gene DeWeese. And Star Trek The Final Frontier by Diane Carey. And I'm sure that this is the... Uh, this is a, a tale of Starfleet. More. Star Trek The New Voyages by Sandra Noshak and Myra Colruth, uh, with a foreword by Gene Roddenberry. This is a fans of eight original Star Trek stories that were never seen on screen. It was the first time published. This was good. I read this, I enjoyed this. Star Trek VIII, edited by James Blish. This is a reprint, this is a fourth printing. And, uh, And it has it doesn't have a it doesn't have a table of contents, but it has all of these stories. I don't know why it doesn't have a table of contents. It's got Spock's Brain by Lee Cronin. It has Cat's Paw by Robert Block. Uh, Where No Man Has Gone Before by Samuel A. Peebles. So, the thing is, though, it doesn't have a contents page. And then it has, For the World is Hollow, and I Have Touched the Sky by Rick Hearts. I believe this says six exciting adventures from the TV series, but I can only find four. There's no table of contents in this book. But these were all adapted by James Blish. That's really annoying that they don't put a table of contents in that book. Um, Star Trek The New Voyages 2, edited by Sandra uh, Marshak and Myra Colbreth. This was also good. This is a good, this is the sequel to The New Voyages. Sequel to that. These were good original Star Trek stories. Um, Star Trek The Next Generation Grounded by David Bischoff, a well-known science fiction writer turning his hand to Star Trek. A lot of them did. And, uh, Star Trek Recovery by J.M. Dillard. The final book in the best-selling Lost Years saga. So 
versus number 73, and it's Kirk and McCoy, McCoy with a, uh, McCoy with a beard. So, we got McCoy with a beard. Now I'm gonna move these out of the way, over here, and open up another box. Yet another box. I don't know if I have dupes on these. I do not think so. But I think at least one is still well, an old stone. Well, one, one might, one or two might crop up. If you don't have them in order, you need there's, to there's no order, no order at all. And I'm sorry for that, but I actually, they've been packed away for years, uh, 10, 15, 20 years. Before they were packed in boxes, they were packed in a, in the back of a shelf uh, where I could not reach them. So it's, uh, um, I'm glad to look at them now and, and, and share them with you. I hope you enjoy looking at them. Um, well, if you show us one, we'd like to see it. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, this is book one of three of my brother's keeper and this is republic so there's another three book series within the series and it's the original uh kirk and spock um next one is uh Const constitution it's number two you don't know where three is might be, might be in here but who knows is dark matters uh Book one of three, Dark Matter series. That's that's Voyager, Cloak and Dagger. So this is the Dark Matter series by Christy Golden, and it's uh, Cloak and Dagger. That's the first book in that subset sub series, Voyager. And this is book uh, two of three is Ghost Dance, with uh, seven and nine, and uh, Captain Janeway. This is uh, Voyager, Shadow of Heaven, book three of three. So there we've got the three in that series. And so now we do have another one in this series, but it's a dupe. So there's a dupe somewhere. Okay. Back to... Next Generation, The Valiant. Star Trek, The Next Generation, The First Voyage of the Starship Enterprise, 1701E, Ship of the Line, by Diane Carey. Another Picard. My Brother's Keeper, Book Three of Three. Is this a dupe of that one? No. So this is the third book, My Brother's Keeper, book three of three in that uh, sub-series. Uh, next one is Star Trek Rehansu, Rehan and this is book number four, Honor Blade, by Diane Duane. So this is a, yet another sub-series. There's so many of them. That's what one thing that really got me uh, annoyed with collecting these is there were so many sub-series within the series. It's still book number 96. It's the Rihansu uh, series. Uh, it says book four, Honor Blade. And then she is holding the Honor Blade. And there's Spock. I don't know what this, is, what this one is about, but there's just so many, it's hard to keep up. And that's, that's one reason why I just, I collected them and then I just kind of put them away and I says, I'll get to them someday to read them and to do my uh, bibliography, but I never got to read most of them and I never ended up finishing the bibliography, although I did start it. Um, another Deep, Deep Space Nine, Saratoga. This is number 18 in the Deep Space Nine series. And um, this is... Um, Deep Space Nine, What You Leave Behind. It does not have a, does not have a book number. This is based on an episode of the series rather than this Deep Space Nine is based on the series, but not an episode. You can figure that out. And then there's uh, Star Trek Gem World, which is, uh, 
you know, Star Trek The Next, this is a Star Trek The Next Generation, it's 58 and 59, uh, book one of, book one of two, yeah, so, so this is book one, book one of two, Star Trek The Next Generation, Gem World, by John Bornholt, and then uh, book two, in that two book series, and it's 58 and 59, in the Next Generation pocketbook paperback series. So it's quite confusing, but uh, I'm trying to give you the information and the, I, the, 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 um, the, 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 the so how, how like, confusing it is. Yeah, to, talk uh, about confusing. Yeah, no. Star Trek. If, if I wasn't one, before, I am now. Another one, Star Trek Deep Space Nine, Objective Bajor. Uh, this is number 15 in the series, Captain Sisko on the cover. I like Deep Space Nine. I watched it, but uh, it was like, it was kind of like uh, at that time in my life, I was busy with so many other things and I, it wasn't a, a series that I was really, uh, I was watching The Next Generation to a certain extent. I enjoyed some of it. I liked Deep Space Nine. I watched a little of it, but uh, Never really got into them that deeply. Uh, Star Trek The Badlands. This is book two of two by Susan Wright. The nail-splitting conclusion of an adventure that spans the Star Trek universe. So this is The Badlands. This is book two of two. I don't know if we have book one of them. This is The Tempest, Deep Space Nine, number 19. Almost to the end now. Aren't you lucky? Huh. This is uh, talking to me. Uh -huh. Star Trek from the original series Bloodthirst by J.M. Dillard, number 37. This is Star Trek Vulcan's Glory by D.C. Fontana. I may have showed this earlier. If not, yeah. it looks familiar. That's the one that I was telling you about, the gem that you, tr in the other video, I think you have that too. Uh huh. Might have three of those now. Well, it might be a reprint. One of them might be a reprint. I have to look. Or sometimes they have different designs, uh, variants, variant covers and stuff. This is uh, an early one. This is, uh, yeah, this is 1982. This is, uh, the Abode of Life by Lee Corey. This was good. This is a Star Trek novel. This is number six in the series. But at that time when they were doing timescapes, they didn't number the books. So there would be a reprint of this with the number six on it. And a similar, probably similar cover, or maybe a little different. This is a Deep Space Nine, Section 31. I don't know what that means. And it's a Abyss. And that's the cover for that one, which is kind of a little different than usual. Star Trek Double Double by uh, Michael Jan Friedman, who wrote a lot of uh, uh, a lot of the um, Star Trek novelizations. Star Trek's uh, Captain Kirk's Deadliest Enemy Returns. This might be the one that's based on the alternate Universe, I'm not sure. Um, Star Trek New Frontier by Peter David. This is book one. New Frontier, I guess that's another another show. Um, the Three Minute Universe by Barbara Paul. And the last one of the batch for, for this time. Uh, on a remote planet, Spock and a young boy named David Marcus are caught in a desperate Klingon power struggle. And this is Star Trek Faces of Fire, again by Jan Michael Friedman. So there you have it. Part two, Star Trek paperback unboxing. I hope you enjoyed looking through these as much as I did. I really like these books. Uh, there's a lot of interesting things here, I think. It's kind of, uh, it's kind of a uh, journey back into my own past, too, because when, when these books came out, I remember them. I remember them being sold in Barnes & Noble and, and other places where you'd have a whole 
at first there was early on there was nothing much to find on Star Trek and then there was a little bit and then there was whole uh, giant cabinets and, and bookcases in the bookstores with full of Star Trek books and you can still now find in the, if you get into a used bookstore or something you'll find tons of and tons of these books usually not in, in great shape though because people read them and they get like all smashed up so it's nice to see them and it's nice to see them in, in, in beautiful condition like this I hope you enjoyed looking at them and if you did thank you send us a uh, uh, comments if you what, what you uh, want to see on the channel and uh, if you want to see more Star Trek paperbacks because I have a few more and uh, okay well with that I'm just going to say uh, ta-ta for now and I hope you all have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year if we uh, uh, don't don't see you uh, before then thanks for looking <laughs>